I'm Joel Moore from the University of California, Berkeley, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about three-dimensional topological insulators. So I think I'll start with a little bit of history, because that still may be one of the easiest ways to understand how the three-dimensional TI is similar to, but different from, in some key ways, the two-dimensional topological insulator or quantum spin Hall state. Uh, so historically, take yourself back to around the summer of 2006. Uh, so many of us in the theory community are very interested by this quantum spin Hall state in two dimensions. Uh, and in particular, there was a paper that greatly clarified how to think of that state in topological terms, in terms of a so-called Z2 invariant, uh, something that was either even or odd. If it was even, we called the state an ordinary insulator, and it did not need to have these one-dimensional id states. And if it was odd, then at least as long as it still had time reversal symmetry, there would always be these edge states. So one reason why this was exciting was we knew about the quantum Hall effect for a long time. And one of the things we knew about the quantum Hall effect was that it had no genuinely three-dimensional generalization. You could stack quantum Hall layers, uh, and to be more precise, you could have three integers corresponding to xy planes, yz planes, and xz planes, if you like, but that was it. There was nothing remotely uh, isotropic or intrinsically 3D. And what happened was that several of us, uh, thinking independently, realized that there is a way to create a genuinely three-dimensional topological phase under the same conditions of time reversal symmetry and non-interacting fermions as we got the quantum spin Hall state. So that's the good news, that many of the same ideas, like a Z2 invariant, carry through. Uh, the tough thing is that it's a little bit difficult to picture uh, the bulk of a 3D topological insulator. So to explain what I mean, in 2D, you can start to picture the quantum spin Hall effect as an integer quantum Hall effect state for spin up, say, going one way, and an integer quantum Hall effect state for spin down, going the other way. Uh, the fact that they go in opposite directions, or more precisely that their edge states go in opposite directions, that's a consequence of time reversal symmetry. So one neat thing about the 3D topological insulator, but something that also makes it interesting, is that there's actually no way to make a 3D topological insulator without using the full vector nature of the spin. In other words, if there's any spin direction where I can say up electrons along that axis do one thing and down electrons do the opposite thing, then the system is not in the standard 3D TI phase. Uh, the good news though is that even though that makes the bulk kind of tricky to write down a model for, uh, we do have models at this point and I think you'll be learning about them, but it's hard to draw a picture with my hands, the surface state is quite easy to draw. Uh, and maybe the easiest way to think about the surface state is to think back to what we did for the one-dimensional edge of the two-dimensional topological insulator. So that was an edge that if we count degrees of freedom had half as many as a normal wire. A normal wire has spin up and spin down going to the right and it has spin up and spin down going to the left. Uh, in a quantum spin Hall edge we could say that spin up goes to the right and spin down goes to the left or if we wanted to be more precise there's one right moving mode and its time reversal conjugate is the one left moving mode. And if we wanted to be even more precise, we'd say an odd number greater than one, but let's not be that precise. So we're gonna do the same thing with the 3D TI, and I'm focusing on what's called the strong topological insulator. That's the one of the four Z2 invariants that is most stable to disorder and most genuinely 3D. So the way to think about the surface state of that 3D TI is that we took an ordinary metal in two dimensions with time reversal symmetry, which it turns out always has an even number of sheets of the Fermi surface once we include spin, uh, we took that and we put half of it, an odd number of sheets at the top surface, and half of it, an odd number of sheets at the bottom surface. Uh, so the simplest way this can happen turns out to be realized in some materials like bismuth selenide, which is to have basically one Dirac point on the top surface and one Dirac point on the bottom surface where one Dirac point means one quarter of graphene. In my counting, graphene has two gapless points in the Brillouin zone and two spins at each momentum, so that's four. In a 3D TI, there's just one at the surface, or in general, again, an odd number. So that surface state was measured very rapidly in photo emission by the group of Zeta Sun, and 
it turns out to be tremendously exciting because the state uh, happens in fairly ordinary bulk materials that have been studied for a long time, and people didn't realize that for profound topological reasons there had to be this surface state, at least as long as I didn't break time reversal symmetry. So you're going to learn more about that, and then uh, I will tell you a little bit more about some other ways to think about this state in a few minutes.